Greninja can for real become a cheat code. Stat-wise, it's solid by itself with its base 103 special attack, along with that insane 122 speed. But it can become one of the best revenge killers with its ability Battle Bond, which after knocking a Pokemon out, just immediately gives you a plus one boost to attack, special attack, and speed. After a boost, it's good offensive water and dark dual stab options with Surf, along with things like Dark Pulse, Destroy Everything, and even coverage in Sludge Wave or Ice Beam. Battle Bond is like a special moxie on steroids, and Greninja becomes incredibly hard to wall, and it's just a super hyper offensive frog that does not play games. So Greninja is one of those Pokemon that just always seems to fit extremely easily into like any team comp. Its speed tier alone applies pressure on opponents even just from team preview, and this thing is extremely fun to use. If you find yourself enjoying Pokemon or frogs, you should probably subscribe because I'm on my way to 400k and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with a Grimmsnarl. Now I am gonna lead off with a Grimmsnarl and <laughs> I'm working with a little bit of a different one. I imagine theirs is probably gonna try to, you know, just do some regular screens or just general Grimmsnarl nonsense. However, I'm actually a special attacking one with Nasty Plot, so I'm gonna go ahead and plot in this thing's face, thinking they probably just go for screens. Turns out they're actually gonna Spirit Break, and that's not ideal, because it, it hurts, but I actually can live with 8 HP. However, you know, this special attack drop kind of is annoying. So, at this point, I figured, you know, this is fine. I'm just gonna Drain and Kiss it, get as much damage as I can. They actually try to go for the Taunt, and you cannot go for Prankster moves on a Dark type, so it doesn't affect me, it doesn't really matter. I just plant a nice little smooch on him and do a decent amount of damage. However, it's just not quite enough. Now, if I end up winning a speed tie, I can knock the thing out. But they have different ideas. They're going to go ahead and switch on out of here as they decide to bring in the Toxtricity. So, buddy is looking punk rock as hell and I just plant one on him. So, it does a decent amount of chip. And at this point, I have a little bit of a decision to make. So, I've, I've healed my way back to decent HP. And I imagine this thing probably just wants to go for a sludge wave to finish me off. And I have the option to bust out the Steel Terra. While it is a bit early, I'm going to go for it anyway. Because if they do go for either setup or just want to just bust out, you know, a poison move, I can just basically come out of it scot-free and hopefully knock out the Toxtricity. So I put the axe on my head and we are flexing out here. So Grimmsnarl does end up going for that poison stab. It's going to be Sludge Bomb, which no longer affects us. And at this point, I can fire off a nice little stab. Dark Pulse still at plus one special attack is going to knock him out. So... At the cost of using my Terra, we take care of the Toxtricity, and we're trying to get Grimmsnarl to also be kind of nice here. So, at this point, the bad part about being Steel-type is now freaking Cinderace is going to launch flaming balls at me, and that is not ideal. So, I do have to switch out here. I decide to go into the Salamence, just because I know I can get a nice little Intimidate. I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me, and have at least a decent time. This is also a weird Salamence, if you're wondering. Salami comes in. We are intimidating. Turns out they're actually going to high jump kick, which doesn't hurt that bad, but uh, luckily for him it doesn't miss. And I imagine they surely switch here. So I'm actually going to end up going for the Roar. You're thinking to yourself, Roar Salamence, huh? And yeah, and that would be correct. So <laughs> they decide to go into the Grimmsnarl, and then Salamence is like, no, actually, I don't enjoy that. I'm going to need you to switch on out of here and bring in something completely random. Now, not only are we going to be able to stir things up a bit, um, but also, Roar is in fact a freaking sound-based move. So that's actually going to activate a Throat Spray, and now we are at plus one special attack, and Salamence going full special mode on him is going to be able to do a little bit here. So, Dreadnought comes in, and this thing is a bit scary. I figure it's probably got the Ice Spinner, but at plus one, this thing doesn't like special attack, so I'm going to be able to go for a nice little stab Dragon Pulse, and just easily take care of the turtle. Turns out they are actually focused at, so he does live, which is wildly unfortunate, and that allows them to fire off the Ice Spinner, and that is going to be able to take care of Salamence. So, I come in, I yell at some stuff, and then my throat hurts, so we get a little throat spray, and then we die. So, at least I was able to knock this thing down to its sash, and guess what time it is now, baby? It is time to bring in the Greninja. He's supposed to be Cut Croak, he's, he's ready to do some cutting and, in general, sharp things. So, I can, basically, I know that nothing wants to switch into this, and really, Greninja late game in a situation like this is super nice. So, 
I'm gonna go for the Surf. It's gonna be able to pick off the Dreadnought, which will give me Battle Bond just immediately, which would be super nice. But they actually end up switching into the Corviknight, who comes in and I'm like, Kalbunga, bitch, that actually is gonna do over half damage to the guy, which is amazing with that Life Orb. And um, Corviknight is gonna go ahead and drown here. I go for another Surf, and that takes care of it. Not only that, but uh, now Greninja is extremely well positioned. And that's just because we are now bonded in battle. And honestly, battle bond feels like unfair sometimes. I get a special attack boost and a speed boost. That makes me faster than everything. Along with having that special attack boost and a life orb. It just does insane damage. So, here's the thing. They can go into Dragapult here. And at this point, I am faster because of that battle bond, which is amazing. And a Dark Pulse is super effective. However, they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the defensive Terra here. And that is the one thing that could potentially allow this thing to live. So it's actually going to end up being Terra Dragon, which does get rid of the Ghost. Obviously now Dark Pulse is going to be a neutral hit. But the good thing is, I am still faster. So I fire off a nice little Dark Pulse, and it actually just straight up knocks the thing out. That is crazy damage. I, I, actually, I believe after Kalkinia, I think that's only like a 25% roll for that to knock that thing out. Um, and we get lucky on a kill there, but honestly extremely satisfying to see the defensive Terra just not even help out, and that is what Greninja is here to do. So, now they can go into the Grimmsnarl, and uh, it, all, it actually also cannot do any Prankster stuff to me because I'm Dark-type. But I can just then go for a Sludge Wave, I have the coverage, takes care of the Grimmsnarl, and Buddy's pissed. He <laughs> straight up just turns it off, and that is the type of rage that uh, Greninja likes to induce. So that is going to be the end of that game. However, we are not satisfied, and that is going to bring us into our next battle. All right, look, I got a crazy idea. You, you, you just hear me out. If if you've made it this far into the video, you should hit that like button. And it, it'll only take you a second. I promise it'll be it'd be crazy. So <laughs> with that, let's jump into our next game, shall we? All right, so this time my opponent is working with some sun, and they're of course going to lead off with the Torkoal here who has the friggin' power to bring out the harsh sunlight. So I, myself, have a Carbink, and I love this little guy. I always forget that this thing even exists, but I'm here to set up some Stealth Rock as a lead and then also have some light play action with the dual screens. So I'm gonna set up a Stealth Rock in this thing's face. It's always a weird kind of matchup knowing that this thing has the ability to rapid spin. So as they set up the Stealth Rock of their own, we are just going ahead and comparing sizes. And mine are looking a little bit bigger, but at this point I know that they probably are gonna go for a rapid spin. And while I don't have a ghost type switch in, what I can do is decide to bring in the Grim Snarl. And that's just because I do have a mirror herb, so if it rapid spins, I can grab that plus one speed boost and try to set up in this thing's face, and just nobody expects this Grim Snarl to do what it's here to do. So it turns out actually they're gonna go for an Earth Power, and that is gonna do some chip, but also gets the Spadef drop. And with that, I should probably not stay in here. I do wanna try to conserve the Grim Snarl just in case. And I realized that uh, with that special defense drop, especially, I'm not going to make it too far. So I'm actually going to switch into the Salamence here. Because I imagine they probably are going to go for something like a Lava Plume or even just another Earth Power. So I can come in here relatively safely. And they're actually this time going to go for the Rapid Spin. So that is fine. I mean, they get rid of the Stealth Rock essentially. But at this point, I'm like, you know what? They probably don't stay in here with the, uh, with the Turtle. So I'm actually just going to go for the Roar. And we're going to try to get some Throat Spray action going once again with our crazy thick blue boy here. So they're actually gonna end up switching into a Scream Tail, which is always an annoying mod to deal with. It does, of course, get the benefit of the Protosynthesis, and that's gonna give it a speed boost. So this thing is absolutely zooming, but I'm like, yeah, hey, actually, I'm gonna yell at you, and that thing does not like confrontation, so it is forced to switch out, which then brings in a, a random teammate. And it turns out to be the Leafeon, which is actually solid for me because while Leafeon is gonna be faster with the Chlorophyll in the sun, I, uh, I know that I can take an attack from this thing, and then also the Throat Spray is going to help that. I don't know, if, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else Throat Spray roar, so it's kind of fun. Now, at this point, I imagine they don't stay in anyway, but I'm going to go for the Air Slash because it's still Stab. It still hurts the Scream Tail if they want to switch that thing in. But it turns out they're actually going to go into the Charizard, probably thinking I have something like the Flamethrower for him. But I actually end up getting a crit, which knocks it down to like 1 HP, and then <laughs> he freaking dies to his own solar power, which is actually kind of hilarious. That Charizard came in and he's like, hey, what's going on here? Boom, air slash to the face and then killed by your own son. So that's just a bad day to be a Zard. And while that's all good and solid, they, bad news is they can go right back into freaking crazy future, old school Jigglypuff here, who does end up being faster than me, of course, which this thing is super quick. And I don't really want to take like a play rough. So I'm gonna switch back into the Carbink. I feel like I can wall this thing relatively easily or at least just kind of take attacks from it. 
as I kind of imagine, this thing's gonna be a screen setter over there. Although it could be different because it's got the speed boost. It might be just an offensive one. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a stealth rock in this thing's face. I do wanna set those rocks back up. It's gonna be just uh, nice to try to punish switching. And they actually end up going for the bulk up, which is exactly not the type of jiggly we wanna see because once this thing's starting to set up, it's gonna get a little bit out of hand. I don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with this thing. And as they're gonna go for a second bulk up, that's kind of bad, but I'm gonna set up a reflect just to make it my life a little bit easier in terms of taking attacks from this thing. And the reflect should kind of help a little bit, but the second I click it, I'm like, wait, this thing has psychic fangs. I always kind of seem to forget that that actually is gonna function like brick break and does get rid of screen. So I'm like, you know what? I do have a little bit of a plan here. I'm gonna go into the mag mortar. Either it's gonna be a kind of just sack switch in to be able to bring in you know, a better option here, or I can get my flame body to actually work, which would be sweet. So, I go into Magmortar, they are gonna Psychic Fangs, which just go right, goes right through the Reflect, and I actually live, but also I get the flame body. Talk about like the first time a flame body has ever actually worked for me, and it works in a nice fashion here, because that thing being burnt is gonna just dampen that offensive power just a whole lot and just be so nice. So, while I do know I just go down to another Psychic Fangs, I kind of did my little Magmortar job, and honestly, it kind of came in pretty clutch right there. Shout out to Buddy for having a hot-ass body. Pause. But it helps out, because you bite it and you get burnt. So, now I do have a revenge switch in on whatever I like into the Scream Tail here, which is not a whole lot, because I, while I do have like a Sludge Wave with the Greninja, Looking at the rest of the matchup, I realize Salamence probably isn't going to go that far for me anyway, so I actually decided to switch this thing in just so I can get an Intimidate. Now Buddy is at plus one in Burnt, so I can be able to take attacks easy. Plus, I'm like, you know what, an Air Slash will do a decent chunk and then maybe I get a flinch, but it actually doesn't do anything, it turns out, and then I just die to a play rough. So I, I came in for that Intimidate and then maybe to like get a lucky flinch and just try to get some value out of the Salamence as I realize it's not going to be super great later. Uh, it doesn't work out. I should have just gone right into Greninja. I was mostly just worried that um, I didn't have enough chip on the fella for it to be worthwhile to use up Greninja just yet. Because honestly, my win condition is looking like it's going to be the, the Croak here. So, I do want to play careful with that thing just because I don't want to take too much chip and then be in like Life Orb killing myself range. So, this time I actually decided to go into the Excadrill, who is... Um, not gonna be faster than this thing, but at plus one in Burnt, I know I can take an attack from it, and then even with its defensive boost, I can get it to a range where then Greninja should be able to uh, kind of pick it off and then start to sweep in the back. So, I actually decided to go for the Rapid Spin here, and that is because I know that I am actually relatively safe versus the freaking old school Jigger. I can get a Rapid Spin off, gets rid of the Stealth Rock, which is nice, um, but also they switch into Torkoal here, which I'm able to get a little bit of damage, and it's an interesting matchup versus this because obviously I have the Earthquake coverage, uh, they have a Lava Plume, but I have it in range to where an Earthquake should kill, so that's exactly what happens. And while the Torkoal does come in and get the Sun back up, it likely is going to be Heat Rocks. So that's going to stick around for a while. And there's still some crazy Sunny Boys to be dealt with here. So, they decide now to bring in the Alolan Executor. And looking at this matchup, I die to a Flamethrower. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and commit the Ghost Terra here, just so that I take a neutral Flamethrower, and then I can get off at least one Iron Head on the guy, because... I do at least also need a little bit of chip here for Greninja to knock it out before I have my battle boost. So, or battle bond boost. I'm gonna go ahead and put the ghost on my head and I do outspeed. I get the iron head off, which is gonna be solid damage, but I also just get the flint. So that was mainly just to basically to do that so that uh, I could bring in Greninja and then uh, pick it off with like an ice beam or a sludge wave and then get my boost and then still be faster than everything in the back. But it turns out sometimes you just gotta give him some Iron Head, and it works out for us there, so that takes care of the Executor. But in comes the next kind of big problem. So, here's the thing. I know that this thing is wanting to Swords Dance. That's what Leafeon's gonna do in the Sun, and I don't have enough damage to knock this thing out in one hit. So while it's able to get up a free Swords Dance, I do go for the Iron Head. It's not quite gonna do enough here, and now, at plus two attack, a knockoff is gonna be able to take care of my Ghost-type ass. So, I've now found myself kind of in a back against the wall situation versus a freaking Leafeon, which is never a good place to be, first of all, because this thing's actually kind of scary. But mostly with a sword stance up, with a life orb and in the sun, I am not looking great with the three mons that I have left. So it's going to be faster than everything I have, but I do have a plan here. So I bring in the Carbink, and we're going to go ahead and take a little peek here and work with, see what how much sun we're working with. They have two turns of sunlight, and I have three mons. So that actually puts me in a spot where 
even though two things are probably going to have to die, it's going to come down to Greninja having to clutch it out, and it has potential. So, they're going to go for the Solar Blade there. Of course, with the Sword Stance, that just absolutely rips Carbink apart, and yeah, that, that's, that's going to hurt. So, slices me open with that, takes a little Life Orb chip, and at this point now, I basically just have to go into Grimmsnarl, and the good news is Torkoal is dead. So they have no ability to set up Reliable Sun, and uh, all I need is just to be faster than this Leveon. So I go into Grimmsnarl just essentially as a nice little death fodder here. I'm going to be like, hey, go ahead and uh, take one for the team here, buddy. Send your ass in to just soak up this last turn of Sun, and also soak up that fucking lightsaber that comes from the Leveon. So that kills the Grimmsnarl, but finally our sacrifices have been made, and the Sun is going to go away, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we needed. And now it is time for Greninja to try to pull this game back and somehow do the impossible. So, uh, of course, I am faster. They have three mods left here, and I am going to go ahead and just click the Sludge Wave, which I am going to, of course, be faster. Finishes off the Leafeon, which is amazing. And not only that, but, of course, we have now effectively bonded. We got ourselves a kill, and we get the, uh, the special attack along with the speed boost. And with that special attack boost, I'm feeling pretty confident with the two things they have left. We should be decently okay. Now, uh, they have two mods left, one of them being the Jiggly, the other is a freaking Volbeat. And Volbeat on a team comp like this is, of course, generally going to be here for a Prankster Sunny Day. So, um, as obviously I just have my highest damage with like a Surf, I'm like, you know, they probably just go for that Sunny Day here. Uh, which is going to give Protosynthesis to the freaking Screamtail. So they do bust that out and it turns the Sunlight harsh once again. I can then just fire off the Dark Pulse um, and I don't have to worry about that being reduced damage from a Surf in the Sun. And that takes care of the Volbeat. So now we found ourselves in a 1v1 situation. I have a plus one boost on my Greninja, which is going to allow me to definitely be faster uh, than the Screamtail, which is exactly what we needed. Because as it comes in, it does still get that Protosynthesis speed. And if I didn't have my boost, it would be faster, which would be bad. But here's the thing. I know that this thing probably has a defensive Terra coming toward uh, me for my Sludge Wave. I know I have the coverage with the Sludge Wave. So instead of that, I'm actually predict a Steel Terra and go for a Dark Pulse. Uh, as it turns out, they're actually going to go for the uh, Terra Poison instead, which is still fine. Because now, clicking Dark Pulse, I still get the stab and it's going to be a neutral hit. So I outspeed, the Dark Pulse comes through, but it just barely hangs on. It lives and does not flinch, it allows it to then fire off a play rough, but thank god for the burn, because that is going to half its attack and allow me to just barely hang on and live that, which is fantastic, and now, uh, after a little bit of burn damage, it is still going to be alive, but all I have to do is just fire off one more Dark Pulse, and that is going to be Greninja coming in absolutely clutch and uh, able to finish off the game for us. So, down goes the Screamtail, honestly not going to lie, the, freak the Flame Body is one of the things that freaking kept me alive in this one. But Greninja is still the GOAT and such a fun like revenge killer in just late game sweeper. And that is going to be the end of that one. So here's the thing. I do have one more bonus battle for you because Greninja is so fun to highlight. So with that, it, it, we got a nice little uh, matchup against a mono normal team, which is not something you normally see. So it's going to make it uh, pretty interesting seeing as I don't have any fighting, which is fun. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this time, they're gonna go ahead and lead off with the Smeargle. Now, a Smeargle lead is annoying. It's like, you know what it's gonna do, and it's still, if you don't have a grass type to switch into a Spore, you're gonna get put to sleep. So that's what I'm expecting, and I'm like, well, um, I guess Carbink, you're kinda just gonna be the guy to do that. So, I set up a Stealth Rock here, at least try to. They're gonna end up going for the Nuzzle instead. So no Spore, and that is going to paralyze us. So Carbink's like, I don't give a damn about being paralyzed, but then instead I actually just can't move the first turn. Which is always a good way to start a match. So <laughs> I'm going to continue to try to set up my Stealth Rock here. As of course they are going to set up the Sticky Web. As to, to be expected from a freaking Smeargle. Especially as a lead. So I'm not super concerned about the Sticky Web being on my side for this match. Just because I do have the Rapid Spinner with the Excadrill. So that's going to be kind of my plan to try to get that thing in eventually. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and set up a Light Screen. Now they are going to work with a Ceaseless Edge. So this thing's here to just set up all the hazards in the damn world. They now have a layer of spikes, and also I get freaking paralyzed again because Carbink is just floating in his damn wheelchair over there. So <laughs> at this point, I realize they're probably just going to continue to go for a ceaseless edge, and I'm like, hey, I'm just going to come in and get edged. So uh, I decide to switch into Excadrill. I know that I can take any attack from this thing. I uh, also I'm air balloon, so I come in. I don't immediately touch the 
uh, sticky web which is great so now I know I'm definitely just gonna be faster and I come in take a ceaseless edge which does pop my balloon but you don't fall onto the sticky web so I keep my speed which is great so here's the situation I know that they know I'm gonna go for a rapid spin they, they have a ghost type in the form of a Hisuian Zorak so predicting them to try to spin block me I'm gonna actually instead go for their earthquake here and as they bring in the Grafaii I'm like either if this is a Grafaii it's just gonna get absolutely bodied by an earthquake but also, if it's going to be the Zorark, that's yeah, solid. So, Earthquake is going to knock that thing out. It does turn out to be the Hisuian Zorark, which is fantastic. So that takes care of the only Ghost type on their squad, of course, as they're working with, like, Mono Normal. And now I'm basically free to go for a Rapid Spin. So, as they are going to bring in the Ursa Luna here, this thing is obviously extremely threatening. Now, I have the option to switch out here, but I'm just going to stay in. I know that I'm faster. I can go for a Rapid Spin and that's going to basically be a trade-off. I, I, I'm going to trade my x drill for getting rid of the, you know, all the hazards on my side, which is fantastic. And while they do still have the uh, Smeargle, I'm going to basically just try to make it so that thing is not going to be able to set that back up. And one way that I can do that is by putting a whole lot of pressure with our good old-fashioned freaking Ninja Frog. So, as x drill does go down... I feel like this is as good of a time as any to bring in the uh, the Greninja here. I know that I'm going to be faster than everything they've got. And also, this fella does not enjoy a, a nice little Kawabunga. So, I'm going to bust out the Surf. Also, I considered working with Hydro Pump on this set, but your boy, just, I just hate missing stuff. So, we're going Surf instead. And they're going to bring in the Cyclozar on this. So, Cyclozar does come in. Take some Stealth Rock, show this not going to be Heavy Duty Boots. And the Surf is going to do a, a nice little chunk to it. So... Cyclozar in general is just gonna try to either rapid spin or just try to go for like a a, um, a freaking shed tail. So I actually I meant to click Ice Beam there, but instead I click Surf again on accident and it doesn't kill, which is bad. So it is now gonna bump it down to Citrus Berry range, which does get a little bit of healing. However, luckily for us, or sorry, Agua Berry, but it goes for the shed tail and that's gonna shed fail because you do not have more than half health and that ends up working out. My misclick is fine anyway, so. Now, I'm like, surely they're going to switch and try to come back in and regenerate some health to be able to shed tail later. So, I just go for another surf here, as an ice beam actually still would have been solid, because they're going to bring in freaking Staraptor. But, uh, guess what? Staraptor is not going to be able to take that. And uh, hard switching in the Raptor on a nice little stab surf is not only going to give us a nice little free knockout, but a free freaking special attack and speed boost. And now, on, so you hate to say it, but a Greninja basically tears through the team because or at least it looks like it on paper because with the boost and the life orb we are kind of unstoppable as long as we're faster than everything so back comes the cyclozar and they're probably like hey you know he hasn't ice beamed me yet maybe <laughs> he doesn't have the ice beam uh, but this time i'm gonna be like yeah i can just go ahead i mean maybe they bust out a terra here but i'm just gonna go for the ice beam they do in fact stay in i am faster and yeah that's gonna a kill freaking uh bicycle dragon over there freaking bicycle is dead as hell and Greninja is basically just fully clutching it out here. So, one thing we do know is that they do still have a Terra of their own in their back pocket, which could potentially be bad. As they bring in the Ursa Luna here, this is a pretty thick fella. Keep in mind the thickness of this bear. It's mostly in his freaking hunchback, but I, I'm just going to go for a surf, and I'm like, hold on a second. This time, I actually have Terra Water, and if they want to bust out a defensive Terra of their own, if I can just add some extra stab on top of my surf i should still be able to grab a kill even regardless of if it's a neutral hit if they bust out of terra so i put the fountain on my head and we are looking extra watery today it's about to get wet up in this crazy minecraft room that we're for whatever reason battling in so they do end up going for the terra of their own and as long as it's not a, 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 like a resist to water we're good it is going to be terra normal sticking with the normal theme here puts the diamond on the dome and now it's not at least going to take a super effective hit from a Surf. But here's the thing. At plus one with Terra and with a Life Orb, that is still just going to kill the Ursa Luna. I get a crit, which I don't know if that matters. I don't think it matters. But regardless, the Ursa Luna goes down. And this Greninja is just wreaking havoc out here as this fella likes to do. So they are down to a couple threats left. They decide to bring in the Smeargle. And uh, I know that I can easily just grab kills with Surf with everything here. And they're just gonna go ahead. They're just they're just gonna head out because yeah, it, it makes sense. The Greninja is unfair and is fun if, when he's on your side. So that's gonna do it for the match. Thank you guys very much for watching. I had to throw a third one in there just for the heck of it. If anybody stuck around to watch this, yeah, I love you. So yeah, I will catch you next time. Peace out.